Welcome into NFL on 365. I'm Grayson Grunhafer, and we are going to continue talking NFL draft recaps. Today, we're talking about the Detroit Lions. Let's do it. Welcome into the channel. Of course, we're talking about the Detroit Lions. So a really interesting draft class for the Lions. You know, you kind of look at their roster. They're clearly in rebuild mode. Uh, they still have to figure out the quarterback position and decide if Jared Goff is the quarterback of the future. I personally don't think he is, um, but I like what they did here. They didn't force anything. They really kind of went out and tried to find the best talent. And I think if you look at their first two picks, you could say that they got the best player at their respective positions, um, which is huge for them. And I, I think they really built for the future. They went out, found the best players they could uh, to try to build this roster. So I like the direction the Lions are heading in following this draft. So round one, pick number two. Um, I don't think it could have gone any better for the Detroit Lions, to be honest. I mean, they got the Michigan boy. They got Aiden Hutchinson, the defensive end, um, who a lot of people thought was going to go to the Jacksonville Jaguars until like a day or two before when everyone was like, oh man, he might fall to the Detroit Lions at pick number two. And that's exactly what happened. And man, I bet Lions fans are just ecstatic. I mean, to get a guy that was as productive as Hutchinson was, um, his final year at Michigan, 62 tackles, 16 tackles for loss, uh, 14 sacks, um, five forced fumbles. This is a guy who had an epic season. Uh, of course, if you want to know how good Aiden Hutchinson is, just go watch Michigan versus Ohio State this season in which he absolutely ambushed C.J. Stroud, who's probably going to be a uh, top 10 pick next year potentially the number one overall pick of uh, the quarterback out of Ohio State. He was probably having nightmares about what Aiden Hutchinson did to him in that game. So I love this pick. This is a cornerstone pick for the Lions, a guy who can be just an absolute dominant edge rusher for them and for the future and just be a guy who everyone around Detroit can relate to. They've watched him at Michigan, and now you get to see him on the field for the Lions. I don't think it could have been any better uh, than this for them. So I love this. I think this is going to build this defensive core even more. And again, pass rusher is such an important position. As we see every year, pass rushers go really early in the draft. This year's draft, there were quite a few really high-end ones. Aiden Hutchinson was my personal favorite. I just think there's something unique about what he did this year and watching him in the biggest moments, he was spectacular. So great pick. Kudos to the Lions for getting that selection right. Um, so let's move on to their next pick. Pick number 12, round one. They traded up a long ways to go up and get a wide receiver who a lot of people absolutely loved in this draft class, and that's Jamison Williams, the wide receiver out of Alabama. He ends up being the fourth wide receiver taken. Drake London, Garrett Wilson, and Chris Olave went before him. So at pick 12, the Lions decided they need to move up to go get this guy, go get their guy at wide receiver, um, and they got him. And this past year, he was spectacular. 1,572 yards, 15 touchdowns on 79 receptions, 20 yards per catch. Um, he's an exceptional talent. Absolutely. You watch his film this year. He was tremendous. Um, the only things lacking for him are breakout age. And the reason for that was because he was at Ohio State, transferred uh, to Alabama because he wasn't going to play at Ohio State. Now, a lot of people will say, whoa, like, he wouldn't have played at Ohio State. Well, okay, you know, they had Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, who went a couple spots before him. Both of them did. And then they also have the number one wide receiver in next year's draft, uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba. So, I mean, it's just tough sledding when you talk about Ohio State wide receivers. It would have been tough for him to see the field. So he went to Alabama, got on the field immediately, and became their wide receiver one immediately. I love his game as a field stretcher. He's going to put so much pressure on safeties uh, with his vertical ability. Uh, but I do think he can turn into a complete wide receiver. Uh, but there is some growth and some steps he's going to have to take. Uh, the number one part of that is obviously recovering from his ACL injury. Uh, he's probably going to miss a few games this year. I'd probably say four or five games. Um, you know, ACL injuries recover faster than they used to. Uh, but he still got hurt in the conference championship game. So, you know, January, 
that's just tough to project him uh, not missing any time at all. I also think they'll probably take it slowly with him. Uh, the Lions are not going to make the playoffs this year, so you might as well take it slowly. Second half of the season, let him loose and let him really go out there and thrive and see what you have uh, in the connection between he and Jared Goff. I also think he fits the build perfectly because they have DeAndre Swift, a great pass-catching running back. They have a very good tight end in TJ Hawkinson, and they have a very, very good young receiver um, in Amon Ross St. Brown. But I think my, my thing with Amon Ra is that I do think he's better in the intermediate game than he is over the top of the defense. And so adding him with Jamison, I think they're great compliments for each other to go along with Hawkinson, who's great in the intermediate game as well, um, and then Swift in the check down department. So I really like this. I think it adds to their, de to their offense and really adds an explosive element. Uh, to their offense, and I do think next year they'll draft a quarterback, and that quarterback's going to be coming into an absolutely awesome situation with the talent they have at the skill positions. Moving on to round three, pick 97. They address the defensive side with Kirby Joseph, the safety out of Illinois, 57 tackles, five interceptions during his final season of college, and it was his breakout season. So he looked a whole lot better than he had at any point in his career, had a very nice final year at Illinois, and it really all came together for him. So a nice prospect. I think he can do a lot of different things in the run game and in the pass defense game. So a very, very good defensive prospect and one that I think could help uh, take that defense to another level in the future. They also had a few late round picks. I think the most notable one is Malcolm Rodriguez, the linebacker out of Oklahoma State, a very productive player, a guy who I could see easily making the roster. Not the greatest athlete, but just knows where to be on the football field, makes plays, and really thrives in any defense, along with the fact that he's just going to be a great leader for them in their future as they continue to rebuild and kind of try to build a culture there in Detroit. Overall, the Lions get a B-plus in this draft. I really like kind of how they assembled things. They went to kind of building for the future, and I think that's what they needed to do. Drafting a guy like Jamison Williams, like I said, a lot of people had him as the best wide receiver in this draft class. He just had an injury he's dealing with. So they took a risk there, but they went out and got their guy, and I think that's so important. Mixing him with Aiden Hutchinson gives them a whole lot of upside on the defense and the offense. So overall, a really nice draft class for the Detroit Lions, a B-plus in my book. Later on this week, we'll continue to talk about more of these draft classes as I kind of dive a little bit deeper into some of the other teams throughout the entire NFL. But for today, this has been Grayson Grunhafer on NFL on 365 Sports.